Okay, this next sample is going to be for the attached waistband. So this is an elastic waistband on a pair of pants or shorts. And this is with the attached casing. So it's built into our pattern. So in this case, when we pattern this, our natural waist is right here where the solid line is at. Our elastic is gonna sit above the natural waist. So this bottom portion of our elastic casing will actually be visible on the outside of the shorts. And then this section up here is gonna be the part that gets folded back with the elastic. This has been patterned for a one inch elastic. So you will also need one inch no roll elastic, which was on your supply list. Okay, before we can stitch the elastic on there, we need to just turn these into a pair of shorts. So I'm going to take one of my front pieces. These are my front pieces. You can tell by the notch crotch area and I'm going to put that to get right sides together with my corresponding back piece we're going to stitch our inseam first and this is cut from four-way fabric as well four-way stretch. Okay, so I've got one inseam pinned. I'm going to do the same for my other one. Okay, next thing we're going to pin is our crotch. So we're gonna open this up to where we've got a U. This is the little uh, inseam that we just pinned, or, or serge, excuse me. So open both of your pieces up, and then you're gonna lay them one on top of the other, matching up that crotch, and it should match up front to front, back to back. When you come to your inseam, we want those to go opposite directions. So make sure one is facing left and one is facing right, but the actual seam is right on top of each other. So they should stagger that fullness so that you're not, um, you're not surging over multiple layers at the same time. Multiple layers of seam allowance. Okay, let's surge that crotch seam.
double check that your seam allowances are still going opposite directions before you go over your inseam. Now we're going to pin our side seams. So we just surged this U-shaped crotch. We're gonna open up either side of this. So open one side up. Your other side should be hanging down here. We're gonna open that up as well. And then pick this bottom one up so that those are right sides together. So at this point, it should just look like an inside out pair of shorts. and then we'll pin each of those side seams. Okay, let's go ahead and surge these. Okay, now we need to measure our pattern to see how big our waist is so we know how long to cut our elastic. So I'm going to measure these top waistlines, again, taking out the seam allowance that's on either side here. So I'm going to, there's a quarter inch on either side, so I'm going to measure it. This is four and seven eighths, and then I'm going to take out two quarter inches. So four and three eighths. plus four and three quarters, four and three quarters plus four and three eighths times two. 
Okay, so we're, we're gonna cut our elastic to 18 and one quarter. We will end up in the end needing this to be an inch smaller than our waistline, but we're also going to have a one inch seam allowance. So right now those two are gonna cancel each other out. So we'll cut it exactly to the length of our waist, which we said was 18 and a quarter. And then we need to stitch this into a circle before we can put it on our garment. So right here is where that one inch is gonna get taken out from the waist circumference. We're gonna overlap it an inch to take up that seam allowance, that extra one inch. And then we're gonna take this over to our domestic machine and stitch this together. Okay, at our domestic machine, I'm gonna switch to just a regular straight stitch. And we're going to stitch this overlap, basically a box with an X in the middle is what we're going for. And we want this to be really secure so that the stitching doesn't accidentally come out as tension is being put on this and it's being stretched around the body. So I'm gonna do an edge stitch around the full one inch overlap. And then for extra security, we're gonna stitch an X through the middle. So I'm just gonna keep my needle in and I'll stitch from one corner to the other. And then to do the other part of the X, you have to kind of go back over one side. And then you can do your, your other part of your X. Okay, so just like that, this does not have to be absolutely gorgeous because it will be completely hidden by your fabric in the end, but you don't want it to be bulky or you know have loops of thread or anything like that. You just want a really nice secure attachment. Okay, now we're going to pin this to the waist of our garment. We want to find our landmarks. We're going to divide this evenly into four quarters, just like we've done other elastics. So right in the middle of that X is going to be my first landmark. Fold it on that and then find the other half. And then we can match those two points up to find the other two. So this is going to help us match those points up with our center front, center back, and side seams. Okay, center back is going to be that where that X goes. So make sure you look at the notches on your um, pattern pieces and um, get to the back. And then we'll put our X right there. And we're pinning this to the wrong side of our fabric. And we're just matching it up with the top of our shorts. So again, I'm just pinning those four landmarks because there will be a little bit of ease on this one that we have to stretch our elastic as we serge it on. Um, make sure when you pin your side seams that the serge is pointing towards the back of your shorts. Okay. We're going to surge this on. So I'm going to go over to my domestic machine where I can put the um, 
the blade down and it'll make surging this on a little bit easier. Okay, so on my domestic machine, I can make sure that my blade is down so that I don't cut into my elastic. And then I'm just gonna start surging this together. So pick up that foot so that you can get this underneath there. I'm gonna pick up my needles as well so I can get all the way under there before I get started. Okay, make sure to just pull on that pin a little bit so you see where my fabric is not fully flat. I'm going to pull on that section just enough to where it's going to lay nice and flat as I serve. No. Oh, there it comes back. And then just surge off the edge at the end. Okay, at this point, we have our elastic surge to the edge there. We're just going to fold down our fabric and our elastic to where it's covering up that elastic and it should just fold right at the edge of the elastic. And then we're going to pin it to where we're matching up those seams, those four seams. Okay, so I've got those landmarks pinned, and now I'm going to flip this right side out. I want to stitch this from the outside so that I can make sure I've got a consistent width on my stitch. And we're going to switch this to a zigzag stitch, so I'm going to go to number two on this machine, and I'm going to push my stitch length up to a two and a half. And then I'll start right at center back. And we're gonna line this up with that one inch marking on my machine. And then just do a zigzag stitch going around. You will have um, a little bit of stretching to do just like when we surged on our uh, elastic. We don't want any of this excess right here to turn into tucks. So we just have to barely pull on it to get it nice and flat. I like to also pull it this direction. So I've got one hand here, one hand here, kind of pulling both just to keep it nice and flat and taut as I'm stitching. My The bulk of my elastic where it was overlapping kind of got stuck on my foot, so I just had to help it out.
Okay, overlap your back stitch at the end. Then we'll take that out. Okay, so on the outside, you'll end up with a, a zigzag that's one inch down from your waistline. And on the inside, that zigzag should, should be going right through your serge. And then you've got a nice clean inside where the elastic is not showing.